Hello, Dr. Markle of Centennial Schultz Clinic. Today we're going to be talking about a cervical condition called cervical instability. Now we deal with instability on a daily basis and have been treating instability for many years. So today I'd like to cover a little bit about some symptoms, how we diagnose cervical instability, as well as how we can best treat cervical instability. So what is cervical instability? Cervical instability is defined as disruption or damage to the ligaments that support the cervical spine. And in result, it creates some extra stress on the surrounding structures, such as the facet joints, intervertebral discs, as well as the nerves as they exit the spine. How do we test for cervical instability? Uh, there's multiple common tests we can do. One of the most simplest and starting points we typically do is going to be a cervical flexion extension x-ray. This is a very simple x-ray to obtain and it can provide a lot of information. So a dynamic cervical flexion x-ray, um, typically uh, for a lot of whiplash patients, head traumas, car accidents, concussion patients, really need a dynamic x-ray to evaluate the overall alignment and stability of the neck. If we look at just a plain neutral x-ray, what we typically expect, here we want to see uh, the normal architecture should be a C-shaped curve in the cervical spine, um, denoted by this red line here. And all of the vertebrae are stacked nicely on top of each other, where it's in good alignment. And this is because the spine is very stable. So things that create the stability in the cervical spine is a network of ligaments. You have ligaments on the front of your spine called your anterior longitudinal ligaments. You have ligaments around each facet joint, facet joint capsules, as well as ligaments in the back of your spine, two of them called your supraspinous and interspinous ligaments. You also have ligaments connect the base of your skull to your spine called your nuchal ligament or your occipital elanto membrane. Um, all these ligaments combined create the stability of your neck. So now let's take a look at an example of a patient that was involved in a motor vehicle accident. This was about a week after a car accident, still having substantial amount of neck pain. We can see the overall alignment has been disrupted where that C-shaped curve now is more of a vertical up and down. You'll see a lot of x-rays um, comment on the loss of cervical lordosis. That's a loss of the normal architecture of the neck. So without even seeing the neck move, flexion or extension, we can already identify that there's likely some instability that's occurred in this. So once we go to cervical flexion, what we're looking for is the alignments of each vertebrae on top of each other. So if we look here, everything we should be nice and neat. We can see some disruption where the top vertebrae is slid a little bit forward on the bottom one. Here as well, in the bottom level, looks a little bit more stable. So we have some instability. Flexion identifies both the facet capsule as well as ligaments in the back of the neck stability. Now let's look at extension. So extension, we can see quite dramatically this area has been damaged from a extension. That means her anterior longitudinal ligament has been stretched or partially torn, allowing for that translation. In, in turn, that translation um, creates some stress on the facet joints, on the intervertebral discs, and also the nerve that exits in between those levels. Another way to evaluate cervical instability is a simple MRI. An MRI will show us the alignment as well as the soft tissue as well. If we compare it to a normal MRI here on the right hand side that has a normal architecture that lordosis is well maintained, everything is stacked nice and neatly on top of each other. In comparison, where this patient was also involved in a motor vehicle accident where she lost she actually had reversal where her C-shaped curve actually went the other way. She damaged 
her inner vertebral discs, as well as her facet joints and ligaments of her spine. So let's talk about what structures are actually damaged as a result of cervical instability. That would be the facet joints because the ligaments don't help protect the neck, so there's extra stress on the facets. The posterior ligaments, such as your supraspinous, interspinous ligaments, your anterior ligaments, your anterior longitudinal ligaments, and ultimately your intervertebral discs eventually get extra stress on them and damage the disc, which can create disc bulges, disc tears, which in turn can push on or irritate the exiting nerve roots, creating arm pain or radiculopathy or radiculitis where people get not only neck pain, but also travels down the upper extremity. So what are the symptoms of cervical instability? A common symptom such as clicking, popping of the neck, um, loss of range of motion, stiffness, as well as depending on the location in which joints and facet joints are irritated can dictate where they're actually feeling pain. If we look at these diagrams here, the numbers correlate to what facet joint sort of refers pain where. So if we injected a certain joint of your neck, it sort of refers pain to a certain area around the spine. So it can be anywhere from shoulder pain to suboccipital headaches to just straight up neck pain. All those things can be coming from the facet joints as well as the intervertebral discs. So how do we treat cervical instability? This is something that's not commonly treated uh, in your traditional interventional spine treatment that typically does corticosteroids or radiofrequency ablation. Um, we take a holistic approach when we're treating the cervical spine. We treat every structure that gets damaged as we mentioned, the ligaments, the facet joints, and sometimes the interferial disc if needed. All depends on what's been damaged, what are the symptoms, and most commonly we treat this with platelet-rich plasma. We've been doing this for over 15 years now with excellent results. We have a host of registry uh, data outcomes that showing uh, efficacy as well as there's been plenty of research studies showing PRP's efficacy in cervical spine and lumbar spine. So if you've been dealing with any cervical spine issues and think you have some cervical instability, we're happy to evaluate you. Feel free to give us a call or reach out on any of our social uh, media networks and reach out to us and we're happy to uh, connect and evaluate. Have a good day.